And hello there, Nats fans, and welcome back to another edition of the Dodcast Post Game Show. I'm District on Deck co editor Ricky Keeler, and joining me today is fellow co editor Ron Jockett. Ron, how are you? Oh, pretty good. How are you? I'm doing good. Now we haven't decided if Ron Ron, do you get the win for today because you're here, or do I or do I get the solo win? You get the solo win because I was not planning on being on. Okay, so they were asking us all about the records last night, so we we <laughs> we're checking about that. Uh, but speaking of records, the Nationals now 59 and 38 after a six to two win over the Diamondbacks. They take two out of three in the series, seven of nine in the West Coast trip, and that should be the story. Video title, it's not the story. Mm -mm. Two big injuries for the Nationals, one bigger than the other. Steven Strasburg, the big story. Uh, leaves after 51 pitches uh, with any injury. Nobody knows who the injury is. That's why we're here. We're waiting to see with Dusty Baker and the Nationals say on the injury. And Eddie Romero left the game in the seventh inning uh, with an injury up to 29 pitches. But the big one is Strasburg. And he always seems to be on the disabled list at least once a year. And after a good outing against Cincinnati, and you thought every, all the concerns were healed from, Atlanta, from that Atlanta game, fastball command wasn't there, and he was went in and, and – clenching his fist, and that's never a good sign for a pitcher, Ron. No, it really is not. And combined with Scherzer's kind of strange outing on on Friday night, it makes you wonder, you know, what this team will do now is going to, to the trade deadline. Are they going to have to go out there and rent a pitcher, or are they going to be fine with who they have? Judo says you get a save for today. So I get a save. <laughs> you get a save today. So you're, you're the Mariano Rivera of the Dodcast. Uh, but oh, go ahead. I only throw cut ups, not cutters. <laughs> Absolutely. So we'll wait on what uh, what the Nationals decide with Strasburg. We're here, so feel free to send us a question in the chat here on the YouTube page. Tweet me on Twitter at District on Deck or at Rickinator five five five. Let's go through the box score. Uh, the Nationals six runs on nine hits, no errors, which is amazing because Wilmer Defoe was playing left field, so you would think an error or two would be in there, but that didn't happen. Uh, the Diamondbacks, two runs, six hits, one error. Owings, which was a Zerman hit, was changed to an error. So I'll probably get changed back. Charlie and Dave were talking about that on the radio, that that was questionable. Joe Blanton ends up getting the win for two outs in the fifth inning, but we'll talk more about how great the bullpen was today uh, a little bit later. And Robbie Ray, who looked off from the get-go, five innings, four earned runs, five total on six hits, four strikeouts on two walks. He takes his fifth loss of the season. This was supposed to be a great pitching matchup between two all-stars and neither of them brought their A game today. No. And as you mentioned earlier, however, the Nats bullpen held on and looked really good. Largely, I think you have to give a little bit of blame to the Diamondbacks offense. They did not get any clutch hits today. Two for 11 with men in scoring position. They left 11 on the base paths. And, but all things considered, when Strasburg leaves that game and Matt Grace, who arguably was left in there way too long by Dusty Baker and Mike Mack, but by necessity, uh, gives up a couple of runs. You're wondering what's going on. Can this team hold on? And Joe Bland pitched well. Romero before the injury pitched well. And I think the star of the day is Matt Albers. I mean, he looked like April Matt Albers again, throwing 96 to A.J. Pollock. Uh, showed that confidence, was pumping his fist after the strikeout in the eighth inning. Uh, all in all, great job by the bullpen today. Absolutely huge. And you mentioned the Albers, and you mentioned the confidence of that. And even though Sean Doolittle has a tendency to allow a first base runner walk, you know, the, since the deal – they, they've held on. They haven't blown anything. It may be angina-inducing roller coaster action there for a while, but, you know, it's worked so far. Yeah, they had to get through that game also without Ryan Madsen, who you would think was unavailable, pitch the first two games in the series. Mm -hmm. So if that game goes longer, I think the only guy that was left was Oliver Perez. And he warmed earlier. I believe he was warming in the fifth or sixth. See, it seems always Dusty tries to find a way not to use Oliver Perez. <laughs> I don't I don't know what it is, but it's always Oliver Perez like the last guy to enter a ball game. Well, he really is the closest thing they have to the Loogie or the left-hander to get one guy, even though his numbers are very good. Mm -hmm. But right out of the gate, the Nationals offense came to play. Four runs in the top of the first inning, and Brian Goodwin leads off the game, crushes a home run over that center field uh, to get on the board. 
Wilmer Diffo gets a base hit, Bryce Harper a base hit, whose hit streak is now at 16 games. Sack fly by Zerriman. Rendon ch- uh, chimes in with a base hit. And Jose Lobatone, two-hit day for him. He has a base hit. So only one kaboom in that inning, but the offense just kept the line moving. They made Ray work, battled back in some counts. And ultimately, that's what makes this team so successful on the road is they find a way to get ahead early and help out their starting pitcher. Right. And considering that they were playing with, you know, at best as a B minus line offensive lineup out there today, they just they just took their chances when they could. Absolutely, Wilmer Defoe also a home run in the seventh inning goes opposite field over the pool. I would have thought that he has that kind of power, but it's been amazing. I, again, I don't like that he's playing left field. At least he came out after left field in five innings, but. With his bat in the lineup, he's been red hot this month, and he deserves to play every day. And it's hard for Dusty to get him out of the lineup because Steven Drew's got to play. You saw Adrian Sanchez get a chance to play today, but Defoe's got to stay in this lineup. Well, we talk, I, I think it was Judo and I talked about it and during one of the games. is that the, Maybe it was someone else. The more that he plays, the more comfortable he looks. And the, a lot of what we saw earlier in the year was rust. Because you weren't playing more than two or three days a week. And at his age, you need to be out there getting your at-bats as much as you can. And now that he's doing that, he's making the most of his opportunity. As you said, he's not a left fielder. He's definitely not a center fielder. But you got because of the circumstances, he, he didn't hurt them today defensively. And, of course, he came out for Stevenson in the double switch. Seth is here. What's up, Seth? And you're right. A 7-2 and two road trip is what you call a good start to the second half. And absolutely, the Nats came out. You could tell that they were exhausted at the end of the first half. And we'll see how much effect this game takes on the following homestand. But they do get that day off tomorrow, and they desperately need it uh, after today. But you sign up for another great road trip, and this team goes on the West Coast, and normally that make can make or break a team and it's made this team both this week and in that ser- uh, stretch in late May, early June when they went eight and one and the only loss was the Clayton Kershaw well, eight, two losses. And one of them was the Clayton Kershaw. Right. You had the nine and one. You had the, uh, no, it was eight and one trip because they, they swept, um, San Francisco. Oh, oh yeah. That's right. No, it was two losses. You're right. Eight and two. And then the nine and one out in Colorado. I mean, when you still, the, 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 the Reds are terrible. And so that the fact that they took four from Cincinnati was not a huge surprise. But to come into Arizona, who you figure is going to be a playoff team, one of the best offenses in baseball, and probably I think the first time in a long time they played a team with a winning record, and it ends up, depending on what happens with these injuries, that it was an easy two out of three wins. What does it, what does it say to this team's resiliency, too, that we've seen all season long? You were here Friday night when they rallied from 5 nothing down early and Scherzer's giving up home runs left and right and at least made that a tie game. And then today, you get the Strasburg injury and all the relievers do their job and hold them to two runs over the final seven innings of this game. Well, I think they have found the seven or eight guys they can rely on. Um, maybe that is a big part of what came out of the Trinan d- deal. Um, with, I mean, Joe Blanton has looked a lot better. Uh, since he's come back from the disabled list. Um, I, I just think that you have guys now who know that they, they can do the job. Uh, we'll see what happens with Solis if he comes back. Uh, Glover can only be an addition when he comes back. He was pitching so well, and you're, and you're, and you're not getting the uh, inconsistency from Sean Kelly. So, look, we knew it was coming. And in fact, Seth was the one that told us to keep the faith regarding the bullpen. I mean, it, if you were to look at this now and now look at, to go back to baseball reference and look at the stats, you'd wonder why anyone was in a panic at all. Absolutely. And Seth, we'll get to the minor league update earlier, uh, later on. Some huge minor league news today on a couple of fronts for the Nationals. So we, our minor league updates is going to be exciting today, but they're exciting all the time. Uh, yeah. But a lot of interesting moves today. Uh, Ryan Rayburn, of course, officially going on the bereavement list. And our thoughts and prayers again continue to be with his family. And he'll be out minimum three days, maximum seven days. Uh, Chris Heisey goes in the DL, which is a shame because he picked up that clutch triple last night. He's been seeing the ball extremely well. Over 20 pitches seen total in two of the games in this West Coast trip. He comes out. Uh, Pedro Severino gets called up. You won't think he would be here very long. They don't really need to carry three catchers. So is a Lobatone, despite go, getting hurt late in the game 
finish the game at least. Uh, and Andrew Stevenson gets the call up today. They don't have many 40 man roster outfield options. So Stevenson really had to get the call and uh, looked good defensively and had a couple of good at bats, including a, he did strike out in a 10 pitch at bat in the eighth, but this is a guy that can come in, play decent defense in, in the outfields and be a good contact hitter that deserves to get a chance to play once in a while, at least while Rayburn is uh, out for the time being. Well, he impressed them. Um, he impressed the brass in the, in the spring training. So uh, this is not a huge surprise that he made the jump all the way up this year. When he, when they brought him up from, from Harrisburg to Syracuse, you knew it was kind of coming. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, he, he did his, his job. Well, let's just say that this field in Arizona is just an absolute joke. It's, it's just bumpy beyond compare. I think Lobatone, that injury was he slipped trying to catch and kind of cramped up thereafter. So, by the way, this was Joe Blanton's 100th career win. Oh, congratulations, Joe Blanton. And, and you're right. He's a guy that's come in and I would say late June since that Cubs series outside of one Mike Trout home run in Los Angeles, he's been really good. Right. So I like what Blanton's doing. I like what Especially, I like what Matt Grease is doing. I mean, he's going to get charged for those two runs that he gave up with base hits, but he came in and was getting ground ball out after ground ball out after ground ball out. And this is going to start Pollock or Jake Lamb today, uh, but still very deep, can beat you in a lot of different ways. And Grace went after him and threw strike after strike. And he's becoming, you hate to have him maybe be the fall guy for this kind of a game because he threw so many pitches, but he's been he's becoming Mr. Reliable for the Nats and the left-handed options. Well, you wrote about it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he went out today in a role that he hasn't had to pitch in in a while and did it very well. Anytime that you come in in an emergency situation like Grace did, and, I mean, yes, he gave up a couple runs, but, you know, he didn't look that terrible. It was just a case of that he had to throw a lot of pitches. And he went to the went to the well one too many times. That's going to happen in these kind of games, but Grace was excellent, uh, uh, I thought, today. Uh, and overall, I think the team had a really good performance. I mean, the only guy that didn't get a hit in the starting lineup was Ryan Zerman, and he had a sacrifice fly. Uh, oh, two guys, Adrian Sanchez. He went 0 for 3. Bad day for Sanchez. He even got picked off at second. I think it was like the third or fourth inning when the Nats really could have put the game away. And instead of it being like 6, 7, 8, nothing, it ended up being only 5, nothing in the third inning. They've been, they had a lot of base running mistakes this week, whether it was Murphy on Friday night, Brian Goodwin trying to get into a triple and not sliding the proper way last night. Uh, so base running's going to have to be one of those things they fix. So they've been making a lot of mistakes there. Well, they've made a lot of mistakes all year, but every time we talk about what's weak with the team, we look at the record and go, oh, okay. <laughs> imagine, imagine, if, imagine if we didn't have a shaky bullpen at times and, uh, and, and ran, ran better. You know, they're still up by 12 games. So, yeah, you look, you look at the record, you look at the standings, and you're saying, uh, what could possibly go wrong with this team? But a lot went wrong today. And Seth asked us this question. Okay. Um, do you think that we the Nats will make other moves? Obviously, tomorrow will be a week until the trade deadline. Uh, we got a lot of trade deadline coverage coming for you, of course. Uh, do they go out and get a bullpen, another bullpen piece? Depending on what we hear at Strasburg in the next few minutes, do they go out and get another starter? Do they go out and get an outfield bat? Because Jason Worth and Michael Taylor, Mike Rizzo said, look for me returns the first, second week of August. But even those guys are having setbacks in their rehab, and Trey Turner. Rizzo says he's going to get an x-ray on Tuesday to figure out what's going on with uh, that wrist. But can they afford to keep waiting for these guys? And do they go out and maybe – I made the case last night, Ron. Remember the Indians last year went out and got Brandon Geyer. That's a, that's a move the Nats can make without giving up much at, at the deadline. Uh, I would – you know, I really think it depends on, on what we're going to – what the condition is of Steven Strasburg. You know, I, I would think up until – Today, I would think that in injury, I mean, an outfielder was something that they desperately probably needed um, because you don't, because you really are out of options now at this point. Defoe is not an outfielder. Ryan Zimmerman has played some left field, and so has Adam Lynn. I mean, you can you can stash people there, but it's going to take its toll over time. But uh, now, when you're looking at a possible, you know, there's still no definitive closer. 
uh, you're looking at the outfield situation, which is still has as many question marks as possible. And now if you're wondering whether or not you're going to have to replace a starter. So I really think everything is up in the air until we find out about Strauss. Uh, I, at this point, I would not go with the. I would not trade for a closer. If I'm to do it, you know, you could look to see if you need another starting pitcher, or if you go for for the outfielder. I mean, it would, I, I, I feel better, much better about this bullpen now than I did a week ago. We haven't really heard the Nats link to many close pure closers. I mean, the one name that popped up today, uh, Jerry Krasnick from ESPN reported that the Nats still had scouts looking at Pat Neshek, uh, which is kind of a surprise because I don't, I, I think they need more of the AJ Ramos types than they do the Pat Neshek types. Right. You know, I mean, Neshek is, they already have several of those. He's a very good pitcher, but you already have enough of the Swiss army knife pitchers in the bullpen. If you're going to go out and make another deal, you need to have an established closer, um, which, which certainly Ramos is. And as I, Oh, uh, Dusty said, this is from Jamal Collier, Dusty says Strasburg had trouble getting loose and they took him out of the game as a precaution. So that's okay. the first word that we have on that. Coco adds, uh, he had a tough time getting loose with Stiff. The Nats will assess tomorrow and Tuesday. Tough to really get a lot out of that. Yeah. Because <laughs> we know the Nats are... Not the most forthcoming when it comes to injuries. He couldn't. It's just, it's just oh, a matter of fact. I'll oh, go ahead. Hear from Zuckerman. He couldn't get loose. Kept shaking his arm, and stiffness was where was used in quotes. That's Mark Zuckerman. Uh, Chelsea James, who we'll talk with tomorrow. Oh, that just slid off my page here. Hold on. Ron already breaking news that Chelsea James is going to come on the dot. Right, is we're going to be tomorrow tomorrow afternoon. Uh, the exact quote is Dusty on Strasburg. We think he's okay. Said Strasburg couldn't get loose at stiffness. Dusty said it was a precautionary move to to remove him. Brushed off the idea that Strasburg would even need tests yet, but doctors will check on him in D.C. That's, that's also from Chelsea. I combined the two tweets together. Andy Romero had a back spasm, and I did see him grab his back as soon as he went back to the dugout. Might have been a case of JT Martinez-itis, but um, that mound – because oh, here's another quote by Zuckerman. Uh, Dusty said, Strasburg will see the doctor when the team gets home. Emphasized, doesn't think it's anything serious, but did not provide specifics. So where do you want to go with that? So you ask a question. And not, well, let, let me stay on the Neshek thing. Okay. Uh, because with Romero having a back spasm – that was going to be my one thing until you broke with the Strasburg news is does an any Romero injury further the Nats' pursuit of another left-hander in Neshek? Um, let me finish with the Romero thought. Zuckerman now saying that he had a back, sp back spasm does, doesn't appear to be a concern. I think a lot of that depth issues are solved if and when they get Glover back because then you have three or four pitchers who can either do that Swiss Army close or set up. Uh -huh. um, I don't know what Nishak's financial situation is as far as how much he would cost the team short-term as far as going over the competitive balance tax. But, again, we've talked about this before. If you go out and grab another arm, uh, unless they cannot get a closer, I'd rather that trade go for a closer. Exactly. So looking at the Strasburg thing, there's a lot. I'm not a doc. Neither of us are doctors. Neither of us stayed at a Holiday Express last night. <laughs> so we can't real. I'm not going to try to pretend that I know what's bothering him or anything like that. But as we talked, we talked about beforehand. And I see clench fit when I see clench fist, arm shaking, and I know this team is not the most forthcoming with injuries. I think you have, and with his injury history. I'm sorry, that does play a factor here. God isn't exactly uh, compared to Max Scherzer in terms of when he'll take the ball. You have to still be worried until you hear everything's fine because that's right. that's just the way it is. You hate to say that about a guy, but that's why he makes $175 million. He's supposed to make these starts, and it's frustrating when he keeps leaving games early. Yeah, this was scary. 
Um, Drew Douglas made the point because he's actually undergone, I believe, TJ. He'll have to correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, maybe throw a couple autographed baseballs in my face like he did the last time. Uh, little inside joke there. Um, but he did mention that the velocity on Strasburg's fastball did not drop once he started to clench his fists and grimace, which certainly was the case with Joe Ross when the, when that injury popped up in the middle of the game. To answer your question before, Nishek, his financials are uh, $6.5 million this season. So considering, let's say, they've already paid about half. Right, so it's about $3 million. Three and then there's uh, twenty, so it's like three and a half if you throw in the luxury tax because they're over. Um, but you know, I mean, that's again, I mean, there's it really depends on what they feel their biggest injury need is. Um, do they have to go out and get another outfielder? Do they have to go out and get a fit, you know, another starter? Um, you know, I certainly can't imagine. Um, them ending this relying on both Edwin Jackson and the completely untested Eric Fetty to end the season if Strasburg needs to go on the DL. Um, we're not saying that that's going to happen, but as you said, there is a tremendous amount of secrecy involved with the organization and with injuries, and you just don't know. Now, Steven Strasburg's next turn would schedule to be Saturday. If you're keeping track at home, the person that would be on turn for that next start at AAA is Eric Fetty. Eric Fetty pitches tomorrow for Syracuse. So going off the fifth day, he would be available to pitch. So you're looking at one DL stint away from Eric Fetty making his debut. And I'm not sure if he's ready yet, depending on how he does tomorrow night at home against Louisville. But uh, that's some of the motto. That means you could you could use a starter. I don't know if you should go after a U Darvish, but there's guys like Lance Lynn. There's guys like Marco Estrada uh, that are both in their walk years. That Estrada at least has been disappointing after his great year last year, and the prices will go down on these starting pitchers. I can't believe that the price would be high on someone like Estrada. Uh, the Toronto, I know they're trying to contend, but let's be honest, they're they're not in position to win. Uh, and Estrada used to be in the Nats organization, so. That would be a guy that I would look at if the price goes down to get another veteran starter in here. Well, if he was to go on, on the 10-day DL, under best-case scenario, he would miss two starts. Um, if you would throw Fetty, I mean, the problem is they don't really have a long reliever there to, to match with him. Exactly. Um, so, and you certainly, I mean, they made the huge mistake of exposing Jacob Turner again, and Turner accepted the assignment again. Yeah. So you're not going to, you're not going to make that mistake. Um, I was sitting here looking at, at tweet deck. Was there anything, is there another reason, is there a reason why Trey Turner is going through another set of x-rays? Uh, I believe it's just a, just an update on how the bone healing and, uh, how they can proceed because he hasn't done baseball activities yet. Uh, so maybe it's just maybe get a clearance from the doctor. Okay. So there's not no reason to be real concerned about No, I, th I from what I read from it today, from what the beat writers are tweeting out, it looked like it was just a medical update. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things that we were talking about back in March uh, was that this team was extremely good, but the depth was just not there. And we really have tested the depth of this team like you would not believe. Yeah, I, I don't. And so if you go to address one, they can't address everything. So I suppose, in my view, I guess you would go if if there is no DL slot needed for Strasburg. That if you're going to go on trade preferences, I would go closer, outfielder, starter. But that's that could change depending on what way the wind blows. And we'll, we'll of course, keep you monitored on what's going on with the Strasburg situation tomorrow, Tuesday, and we're back here doing more Dodcast post games. Uh, we'll keep you up to date. Uh, but let's go around the division. Uh, start in my with Miami. 
who lost to Cincinnati six to three this afternoon. Uh, not not everything looking good in Miami right now, uh, especially with their ownership situation still up in the air. Uh, AJ Ellis did have a solo shot today, but that and Marcelo Zuna had his seventy first RBI, uh, but that was really all that happened that was good for Miami today. <laughs> Uh, the Mets lost to the Oakland A's 3-2. Three, three solo shots by the A's was a difference in this one. Michael Conforto, a home run, his 19th of the season. Uh, but Blake Trinan got the pitch again for the A's today through a scoreless eighth inning. So he's actually been really good since going to Oakland. You got to think, Ricky, that not having the pressure of being on a contender probably was the best thing for him. Yep, and that, that I think absolutely. And he's going to get a chance to reestablish his role there. So that's a big plus. Uh, Braves had it. Well, actually, this was a really interesting game. Clayton Kershaw left the game after the second inning. Uh, he's going on the disabled list uh, with a back issue. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Kershaw and what how long he might be out for because he was looking on his way to a Cy Young year and still might win the Cy Young. Uh, but the Dodgers yeah, need him to be now, healthy. Now also a Titan makes the uh, Nats job of getting a st another starter difficult because the Dodgers are going to be really forced to go out there, especially with Brandon McCarthy back on the disabled list. They called up Maeda, I believe was the move I saw that they were going to make. They need five, They need healthy starters. Um, and so the Dodgers are definitely going to be buying and they probably have the resources to do what the Nats can't do, depending on who they want. They have a lot of them, no question about it. And they're rumored to be in the running for you, Darvish. Uh, we'll see if Texas decides to trade him, but Darvish and Gray are really the two big starters on the market. They're in the running for relief pitching. They have so many prospects they can deal. That's a team I think you have to worry about. Uh, Logan Forsythe, the walk-off single in the 10th. But the reason it went to 10 innings, Kenley Jansen blew his first save of the season thanks to a three-run shot from Matt Adams. What a job he's done for Atlanta this year. But the Nats' lead in the NL East is now up to 12 games. Uh, so the league keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and Atlanta will play Arizona tomorrow when the Nats are off. So they could get another half game before they take the field Tuesday night against the Brewers, who we'll get to. They've been struggling. Uh, let's go around the minor leagues. Of course, the big story today, the GCL Nats. We rarely start with the Gulf Coast Nats, but when you throw two no-hitters in one day, you get to lead minor league update. Oh. Uh First game, they won four to nothing. Uh, Joan Baez, six innings, seven strikeouts, one walk. Jose Jimenez got the final three outs in the seventh inning to get the first no hitter. The Nats won one to nothing. Uh, it was the combined effort of Jared Johnson. That's like, yep, Jared Johnson and Gilberto Chu get the outs there. So, congratulations to both, all four of those pitchers. I know Joe brought up in the chat are any of those guys trade chips? No, I, I don't see that. Baez got, was in Potomac this year and had a rough start, so this is just maybe something to get his confidence back up. Uh, but you never see back-to-back no-hitters, so this is probably the closest thing you're going to get. I've never yeah, heard really of that. I know there's seven inning games, but I've never heard of that. I mean, it must have happened before, but that's the polo Johnny Vandermeer. I mean, that's extremely – that's – wow. I had to do a double take on my screen when I left to check it. Cause I go to check it usually in the afternoon when there's day games and I'm like, wait a second, is that really saying no hits twice in the hit column? And I was absolutely stunned by that. So great yeah. job by all four of those pitchers today. Absolutely. Uh, great job by Syracuse. They scored four runs in the top of the ninth inning to beat Columbus six to four. Uh, Naftali Soto, a solo shot in the top of the ninth inning. Clint Robinson added an RBI. He's up to 57 this season. Eight of the nine Chiefs hitters had a hit, including Deaza, who's playing center now at Stevenson's in the big leagues. Austin Adams got the win in relief. Two innings, three hits, and struck out four. And Wander Suero, again, just does what he does. One, two, three, save. His ERA now 2.70 uh, in AAA this season. Uh, it's another that, option, Ricky, that depending on how soon he may be ready. You also have to put him on the 42, so that's uh, another option that they have to think about how they're going to get all these 40-man moves. They need to put Worth in the 60-day to make the Stevenson move. And Worth hasn't even be. Oh, is that what they had to do? Mm-hmm. Because Severino was for Rayburn, so they had to – with Heisey on the DL, they had to clear a spot for Stevenson on the 40, so they put Worth uh, on the 60, I believe. 
but he's been out, I think, a little over a month anyway. So he's close to the 60 days. It's not like it's much longer for work if he gets the baseball activities going again. It would be he, – he would not be able to – well, since he hasn't started baseball activities yet, I believe it was uh, early June. So he would he is he is creeping up on it. Uh, other way – other scores around the minors. Harrisburg lost to the Rumble Ponies of Binghamton 3-1. to one. Lone RBI in this one coming from Steven Perez, who had two hits. Yadiel Hernandez had a pair of hits. Taylor Hill took the loss, but a strong outing. Uh, seven innings, three runs, six hits, struck out two, and walk one. Just didn't get enough offensive support today. Potomac picked up their suspended game from yesterday and lost eight to six to the Lynchburg Hillcats. Uh, Jack Sunberg had, had three hits. Rhett Wiseman, we said, at a home run last night. Uh, Robles had a couple RBIs. He's at the 33 this year. He got the night, he got game two off. Uh, and Potomac did win game two, four to one. Rhett Weissman, another home run today, his ninth of the season. So home runs in both games. And Hector Silvestri, a strong outing. Five innings, three hits, three strikeouts, and two walks. Gets his eighth win of the season. But by far the pitcher, I think you can make the case has had the most success across the board, uh, is Mackenzie Mills at Hagerstown. Uh, the Suns beat the Augusta Green Jackets 9-1. Uh, to one. Great nickname, Green Jackets. Too bad, it. It was, too bad it wasn't the Masters today. It was the Open Championship. Uh, but Hagerstown won nine to one. Jake Knoll, a home run, his 12th of the season. He's up to 51 RBIs. And Mackenzie Mills, seven innings, one run, five hits, six strikeouts, bounced back after a rough outing last time. And he is now 12 and two with an ERA of 3.01. So he has been really good this year. And you have to wonder uh, whether or not a promotion's in his future, the way he keeps performing. You'd think so. He's just he's pitched well all year. He had one game. We what one bad start. He had a game. I think it was the last time he gave up like five home runs. But really, besides right. that, he's been really good. Beyond that, and their limited pitches, you know, he's had several double-digit strikeout games this year. His control's pretty good. I wouldn't call it immaculate, but maybe immaculate. <laughs> um, so certainly, he's war- you know a promotion is warranted. I would think sooner than later. And finally, Auburn beat Williamsport 7-4 to four in 10 innings. Double Day has had a lot of extra in games this year. But Chance Shepard had a home run his third of the season. Uh, Nick Rackett got the start, four and two-thirds, two runs, seven hits, one strikeout, two walks. He was the Nats' third-round pick in the draft. Jake Barnett got the win in relief despite blowing the save. Uh, two innings, one run, three hits, two strikeouts, and a 1.5 ERA. So he's off to a good start this year in the Double Day's bullpen. Uh, let's look here at the chat. A couple of things we didn't mention. Danny Espinosa signed with the Seattle Mariners. So there's major your league deal. That's a major, major league, league deal. So he's he's back in the big leagues. Hopefully he'll play better than he did in Los Angeles. And Zach Britton, 55 straight saves dating back to 2015. Of course, he's been hurt a little bit this year, but that's still an impressive feat. And Seth said the Nats need Zach, uh, need Zach Britton to win the World Series. Um, I think that would increase the chances for sure. His numbers aren't great this year. Numbers aren't great, but I think he's a guy that you can be totally reliable on. He's not going to go out there more often than not a save chance, and obviously by the 55 straight. Um, you're just not going to see that because the O's and Nats just don't deal with each other. It's you not can, like the Cubs and White Sox that the White Sox can say, you know what, we're not in a position to win. Let's get the most we can. Baltimore, I don't really know how they're going to sell, and – Really, Britain and Brock are their two big chips because they're not going to deal Machado. I doubt they want to help the Nationals get to or possibly win a World Series. You can wave to him as he flies overhead on his way to Los Angeles. Oh, no. See, that, that we talked about this. If Zach Britton goes to Los Angeles and pairs with Kenley Jansen, the Nationals are in trouble. But they don't have to worry about the team on the south, on the – was it the north side of Chicago? Yeah, north side of Chicago. Yeah, we're not worried about the White Sox unless Dane Dunning gets called up. <laughs> because the Cubs are in progress tonight, Jose Quintana starting, and if they beat St. Louis, they are tied in the central with Milwaukee, who is the Nats' next opponent. Uh, Milwaukee just lost two out of three to Philadelphia. That's a score we didn't get to. Uh, Phillies beat the Brewers 6-3. to three. I know we forgot one score on here, but a lot of news going on today, so we lose track. Uh, but let's look at Tuesday night's matchup. Uh, Zach Davies gets the ball from Milwaukee, 11 and four, with a 4.76 ERA. Uh, he's going to take on Edwin Jackson, who makes his second start. And I did the Dogcast Tuesday 
uh, when Edwin Jackson made his season debut, I was impressed. So many different pitches he was throwing, fastballs up to 97. Got out, he got gave a Mike Trout homer and didn't look back really. Uh, and I think you have to be at least content. This guy's going to go out there and give you five strong innings. But the problem is now with the bullpen tax as much as it was today, even with the day off, they might need Jackson to go six, maybe pitch in the seventh, and we'll see if he can do that uh, against Davies. Well, didn't he pitch into the seventh in, in Anaheim? He, he did. He went seven whole innings. And and he's on a week off. Mm -hmm. And so, thankfully, he was not needed today because they were talking about that on, on the radio. Whether, I mean, they were lucky that he did not pinch hit when they thought he was going to pinch in the fifth because if the game had gone extra, he probably was going to get two or three innings of work today, and that really would have just kind of blown up the whole entire ball of wax. But with the week's rest, I would think that he could, you know, if he pitches efficiently, he could go six, maybe seven. And if it's back spasms for, for Romero, then hopefully that's just a symptom of pitching in a hot Arizona air conditioning. Now, Davies is 4-0 in his last five starts. Uh, gave one unearned run against the Pirates last time out in a no decision. So he's been uh, kind of had a little bit of hard luck. High ERA, opponents hitting near 300 against him, but he's got 11 wins. Uh, so he's definitely, with Milwaukee state of their rotation, one of those guys that very good on the road. He hasn't lost a road game this year. He's got a 3.18 ERA away from Miller Park and a 6.45 at home. So you can go he's off the home road splits, but... That's crazy numbers. That's Julio Tehran numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Uh, in terms of Nats who faced him, Murphy's two for six with a double uh, and a couple RBIs. And Harper, who looks will look to get his hit streak to 17, uh, two for five with a double. He just had a tremendous thing uh, coming out of the break. Yeah, he's been, he's been amazing. And I think... Milwaukee's going to be an interesting team because this is a homestand. Milwaukee and Colorado, the Brewers, not playing well right now. They've been in free fall since the break. But they have Eric Thames. They have, you know, the third baseman very well that's been having an insane season in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. um, Domingo Santana is still there. Uh, VR is still there. They got a good back end of the bullpen with Canable. But you, Milwaukee needs that starter, and you're going to wonder if, the Brewers in the next week are going to go all in, not all in, but they have a good prospect depth to trade from, and this is their chance. I mean, why not take advantage of a surprise year and try to go for it? All right. So another quote here from Strasburg uh, said he learned over the years when to pitch through something and when to pull back. He does not want to risk further injury. That's from Dan Colco. So, but, but if he was trying to pull pull back, would why would he have tried to finish the inning? Like that's, I was kind of surprised after he walked Ray, and I was watching the Arizona feed because MLB Network had that. Um, Bob Brenly was pointing it out that he looked hurt. Um, but if he's trying to pitch through it in that situation, I mean, I would have rather just said, "Look, I know he's trying to give it for the team, but he was walking guys left and right." What happens if Descalso doesn't look at that 3-2 pitch and to strike and the bases would have been loaded? So I, 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 it's hard to read Strasburg sometimes. It really is. Well, and, you know, he's had trouble in the heat, which does, this does not look like that was the case. Um, and he's, he, he's injury prone. And hopefully this isn't a serious injury prone. This is just a a small bump, maybe missing a start or two, and then back at it to finish the season. Which I'd be really concerned that would be Eric Fetty in Col against Colorado, but you can always throw Jacob Turner, like you said, but you're risking him being somebody picked up eventually if you keep bringing him up and DFAing him, bringing him up, DFAing well, him. If you've talked about this before, I know, I'm sure you and I've talked about it, I'm sure you've talked about it on the show, is that the uh, – that the National League has solved Jacob Turner, and so bringing him back up at this point, I don't, I don't think is a smart move. I think if you were, if you were forced to bring up another starter, that it would be in, it would be Fetty, especially if the days match. In the International League, uh, Jacob Turner's getting figured out in the International League. He's had a couple really bad games there, 
Uh, so that's I know the Nats love his stuff, and I get I understand that, but he's not even looked good in AAA over his last few times out. So I mean, if you have to make a move Saturday for precautionary reasons, put him on the ten day, give Fatty a shot. I don't know how long he'll give you. We'll find out how many pitches he throws tomorrow, but he's the guy I give the shot to. All right, so we got uh, only one thing on the site today. Um, that was my article on the Nats being gray on the road, and I think that's a, a good sign, especially for the postseason. I talked a little about the article last night because let's say the Nationals lose a game at home in a division series like they did last year. You know this team can go on the road, score runs, and get a W. I mean, Max Scherzer, Steven Strasburg, and Gio Gonzalez are 22-6 and six combined away from home this year. Daniel Murphy has 71 road hits. That's 14 more road hits than Bryce Harper has this year. So this team just brings their bats on the plane. And I know they're a good offense wherever they play, but it's just flat out of me. They're putting up Astro-like numbers. They, I think, going into today, had 45 more runs than the second most in the National League on the road. And that's remarkable. Really, really is. Um, I think they're just – a lot more relaxed on the road. You know, I think this is kind of I one couple more tweets here to go through. Chelsea Jane so Jane says, So in some, today was far less red red wedding and far more brothers without banners. A little violent, but it could have been worse. <laughs> um and I think it does it for me on Twitter since they're now Zuckerman is talking is showing pictures of Dan Coco eating ice cream Sundays. Yeah, if that bad is Cold Stone Sunday melted on him. Oh. Gotta turn into soup. So, uh, can't you gotta eat that cold stone right away. Some soups are better than others. Um, you know, I think this is kind of a bridge year, I think, with the fan expectations coming off the playoff failures. I mean, the fans are, you know, the support is good and, and they're not they don't sit on their hands, but I don't think that the team and team and the fans are quite as one yet at home. Um, when you're playing away from home, and remember, they've played a lot of teams with some bad records, too. Um, not this weekend, obviously. It, they just know what they're doing. I mean, this is a very professional squad, and they come out that way. But luckily now they get to go home for a little bit. They haven't been home since before the break, so right, that'll be, I think, a good help and helps, will help them even relax and I think even do better. I and, mean, middle of the order is still good and good win in, in – and Defoe are having good numbers at the top of the lineup, and that should Absolutely. stay that way. If you're not going to move Rendon there, good one in Defoe should be your one, two hitters. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see what Dusty decides. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, Ron broke the news that tomorrow, uh, Ron and Drew will be talking with the Washington Post Chelsea James. Hopefully, she has cool one liners like she does on Twitter sometimes. Uh, but uh, that should be entertaining. We had Byron Kerr last week, and being in a week till the deadline, we figured we'd have Chelsea on to get the latest trade news. Now we'll get the latest Steven Strasburg news. Uh, so sure, Ron and Drew will have some great questions, and I think you guys will learn a lot uh, during this interview, and I'm excited to listen to it. Yes, yes, <laughs> my line. Looking forward to it. Uh, should be quite interesting, and um, especially, you know, hopefully she'll have a little more insight on, on what she saw because she was in Arizona. Um, regarding Strasburg, and if this is something that we should be concerned about, or whether it was just some sort of fluky bad thing, you never know. So I believe we'll have some form player of the week. Not yeah. to tell you who the player of the week is, you just have to figure it out. But you can take a couple guesses. Um, and then what else? Everything else up in the air. That's why you got to go to districtondeck.com. There's co-players of the week, by the way. Oh, cool! Co-players week. We've not had that this There's year. Co-players of the week this year. That is that is even better. I mean, I love co-players of the week. Two guys sharing the love on this team. So we get that. Um, and the rest, you're just going to go to districtondeck.com to find it. I mean, we're not going to tell you. That's at least cause because I don't know. They don't got to know that. But go to oh. districtondeck.com. <laughs> uh, you can, of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel. All of our videos show up there. All of our post games, all of our interviews, everything video form is on that channel. So subscribe, like this video. Please like this video. Uh, you can like us on Facebook. Got all articles there as well. 
Uh, follow us on Twitter at District on Deck. Follow me on Twitter at Rickinator555. And follow Ron on Twitter at Ron Juckett, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I got that right. Uh, Ron and Drew are going to be with you tomorrow, as I mentioned, and during the Milwaukee series. I'll be back with you this weekend for Colorado, and hopefully we'll try to get a Rockies guest on the show. It's Colorado, Bud Black coming to Nats Park for the first time since not getting the Nats manager job. So you know he'll have a chip on his shoulder for that. He was there last year. But with uh, San Diego? Oh, no, that's right. That's right. Because Never mind. I know what you were getting at, and I screwed up. So you know he's going to want to stick it to the Nats ownership at some point, try to get a series win after the Nats absolutely embarrassed Colorado and, and Coors Field earlier this year. Uh, but that's going to be a test. The Rockies are playing well. They got the second wild card right now. So both these teams are playing. Red would be in the playoffs today. So this extremely important homestand, not extremely important, but you want to play well uh, and wrap up the month of July because, well, they got one game at Miami, but, well, that's a trade deadline day. So I consider it at the end of July. Uh, so then thanks for all you guys for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, and until next time, from all of us District on Deck, he's Ron, I'm Ricky, and we'll see you tomorrow or Tuesday.